if you want to learn how to make delicious fluffy two ingredient rotis then keep watching this video i got you so you want to start out by measuring your flour. Now, it's not just any flour. I use chapati flour, which you can buy from most Asian superstores and shops. I've listed the brand that I use below in the caption. Now, you can make this by hand by kneading the dough as you would for any bread. But I use my KitchenAid to make life easier with the dough hook. You just want to add boiling hot water to this. That's key, by the way, because the hot water allows you to make a very, very soft dough. And you need this for at least five minutes until it comes together. It's nice and fluffy and soft. There's no exact recipe here. There's no exact measurements. You have to eyeball it to some degree. And if you feel like your dough is too wet, then add more flour. And if you feel like it's too dry, then add a little bit more moisture. Now, the key thing here is to let your atta sit at room temperature for at least two hours before you start rolling out your chapatis. And then you want to dip, dip, dab in a bit of flour. The same flour that we used to make the dough is the flour that we're using here. Then you want to do the most crucial part, I think, of this stage, which is thinning out the edge of the roti. So you use your thumb and your index finger and you go around in a little circle to thin out the edges before you start rolling this out. Why are we doing that? Because we don't want thick, fat edges. It really prevents the roti from fluffing up and becoming all beautifully hot and steamy, right? Trust me on this one. Once you've rolled your roti out to the desired size, you can make them as big or as little as you want. You want to put them on a preheated hot dover on a medium flame. I showed you the flame so you have an idea of what a medium flame looks like. Then when you get little bubbles and the colour changes on your roti, you flip it. Once you've flipped it, you do the same on the other side and allow it to cook a little bit. Uh, again, we're still on a medium flame. And then get a tea towel or a cloth of some sort, right? Start pressing that roti down. Now, the pressing, what that does, it basically encourages the water in the dough to turn into steam. And it allows the inside of the roti to start fluffing up like this. You can see it's like full of air and it's beautiful. This is the part that we call sick. This is essentially... Um, cooking the the roti over a hot flame an open flame and you want to do this on a high flame now on a high heat if you've got an electric cooker i'm sorry i can't help you I, i'm a girl that likes fire and gas right so this is the only way i can show you how to make your perfect roti as you are turning it you're cooking the edges and just to ensure you're being gentle with it so you don't get any holes in the roti because that's going to prevent it from steaming up. Now, as you can see, I've got a hole in mine. So I'm covering it and I'm pressing down on that hole to trap in the steam to allow it to fully fluff up. Once you've cooked the roti on one side, you want to flip it over and do the same on the other side. And we actually sake the edges of the roti because those are the bits that get left behind and they tend to be a little bit raw. So pushing down and pressing it and having contact with the dhava allows you to cook the roti fully. Now, once you've cooked it on both sides, you can take it off the flame and you can serve it with your favourite curry. And trust me, it's absolutely delicious. It's such a soft and fluffy roti. Absolutely devoured it with this janadal gosht. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial and if you would like a recipe for the Janadal Ghosh in the comments below.